staff, thank you for joining me once again, where today the task is dealing with criticism. Um, yes, we all get criticised from time to time, don't we? Um, doesn't happen to me very often that I'm aware of, but when I am made aware of it, I do like to make a response. So here it is. Uh, what we have here is, uh, by way of analogy, this is not about anybody's actual appearance or reality in any way, this is an analogy. What we have here is three spotty little teenage boys hiding in their mummy's basement, giggling away to themselves, like Beavis and Butthead all rolled into one, congratulating each other on their cleverness, despite the fact that none of them has anything remotely intelligent or clever to say on any topic, pretty much. Um, you also have three boys here, none of whom hold a single advanced research degree amongst them, as far as I can tell. Um, you have guys claiming authority and competence in areas that they have no business doing so, um, who want to level criticisms at yours truly, who absolutely is above reproach in terms of the academic CV, if anybody wants to check for more than five minutes into that. Um, but that's for another day. Let's stick to what they actually have to say as closely as we can and respond to what they actually have to say insofar as that's possible. Uh, the caveat to all of this is that you need to understand if you don't already who these boys are. Uh, Danny Roddy is a well-known acolyte, a well-known devotee of the Ray Peat School of Self-Abuse, otherwise known as the Ray Peat's ideas about what's healthy metabolically. Um, these, these clowns are supporters of carbohydrate. Um, they will even go so far as to say carbohydrate is, uh, intake is necessary in the human diet and for human metabolic process, etc. Um, these are boys without the first clue of what they are talking about whatsoever. Uh, and as such, you know, Jay Feldman and Mike Fave are friends of Danny Roddy's, and as such, that's what you're going to get. Um, we'll put it right where it's wrong, though, shall we, boys and girls? That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Let's crack on with that. So, boys. Bioenergetic Helpline number eight with Jay Feldman and Mike Fave. And Harrison Ben is not here today. We hope he's okay. We don't, we tried to schedule this multiple times and I goofed up the first time. And so, uh, we, we hope you're good, Harrison. Our hearts are with you. Right, guys? Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. 100%. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, but we have some business to talk about. Uh, one about the Randall cycle and the next about serotonin. And then we'll get into your guys' questions. And so, your guys' questions is. Jay, do you want to take it home with the uh, Randall cycle? Sure. Okay, before Jay gets started, what you need to understand about Jay, if you don't already, is that Jay is describes himself as a health coach, whatever that means. Um, I'm not sure what, if any, credentials Jay Feldman actually holds in any aspect of health or nutrition or physiology or any of that. He's a bloke with an opinion. Okay. He also refers to himself or describes himself as an independent researcher. Well, I, I haven't seen a single research paper in the peer-reviewed published literature anywhere with Jay's name on it. Um, research is what you do when you undertake experiments and other um, academically publishable works, and then you get them peer-reviewed and published in a peer review journal. That's doing research. Reading other people's research is not doing research, by the way, Jay. Okay, so you're not actually an independent researcher at all, are you, son? Um, you're a bloke with an opinion, uh, and it's a stupid opinion if, if, uh, if it's, uh, well, I'd, I'd say if. I've watched the first five minutes of this. I haven't watched it all through, um, but everything that comes out of your mouth in the first five minutes is pretty fucking stupid, son. But anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, well, now. Off you go. So there's this video that was sent to me recently. It's Bart K discussing the Randall cycle in reference to Paul Saladino's video. Yeah, yeah, so of course, these boys being devotees and lovers of carbohydrates, of course, we know whose side they're going to be on. You know, discussing the Randall cycle, he's like commenting on it. And uh, so I was, I was sent this video and then I was recently on the Peak Human podcast with Brian Sanders and then Kate Deering was on following me. So in the comments, there was a bunch of comments about 
the Randall cycle and referencing things from this video that didn't really make a lot of sense. Well, just because something doesn't make sense to you, Jay, doesn't mean that it doesn't actually make sense and isn't full of veracity and correctness. Because everything I say is, son, I'm, I'm very careful about the way I craft my message, my verbiage, my whole stock is about being unassailable. So the fact that you don't understand it, that only points to your incompetence. Okay, sorry about that. And we're then linking back to this video. So it seemed like it was something that was kind of in the ether, at least in the low carb space for the people who are following that channel. And uh... mm, no, actually discussion around the Randall cycle and its implications has gone much wider than my channel, my channel followership, actually, Jay. It's a piece of information that was buried in the 1960s because it was at odds with the message, the acceptable narrative of the time, um, and really for no other reason, pretty much. And it never really saw the limelight that it should have or gained the attention that it should have or the respect it should have. And as such, it's not even particularly taught or discussed at all. It's just a piece of information that most people are unaware of. So I, am, as far as I'm aware, I'm the first person in the space to have spoken about it in my videos, and other commentators have picked up that ball and run with it now, and it's much, much wider than just my channel and my channel followership. So for, for someone who claims to be an independent researcher, you haven't done your research even on that, have you, son? No. Okay. It's not looking good for you, is it? There's a lot of misconceptions that we felt like we're worth clearing up and just okay so if you're leveling an accusation at me of misconceiving something being in error about something what you need to do jay is point directly to it okay point to it prove me wrong good luck son <laughs> as, as i say i i, I base my whole struck around being unassailable and making sure that everything that comes out of my mouth is fundamentally absolutely correct okay so if you want to say i have misconstrued something point to it discussing um you know if for no other reason i mean i think it's worth talking about anyway i know like even in how it's sometimes discussed in the bioenergetic space, like there's some discrepancy and disagreement. So I figured it's worth talking about as well um, for that reason. But yeah, I mean, I was, I don't know if you had an idea of where to start, Mike, but I have some quotes from the video. I'm not surprised you've got no idea where to start, Jay, because you've got no idea where to start, frankly. That's why you're lost here. For that, you know, we could kind of use to encapsulate Bart's view and then just... Well, look, if you wanted to encapsulate my view, here's what the sensible thing would have been, Jay. Invite me on the show to provide you with what my view is. Sitting there speculating about what my view is and getting it wrong is not helpful to anybody. You're a coward, by the way. I'm sitting right here. I have been all along. My email address is on the front page of my YouTube channel. If you want to talk to me about what the Randall cycle is and what it isn't and find out what my view is, I'm the person you should talk to. Not Danny fucking Roddy, who has no idea about... Look, Danny wouldn't know his elbow from his asshole if he labeled both of those things and taught him how to read some. Okay? Kind of explain what the Randall cycle actually is and... and go from there. Can, can I say I, one thing? I don't know if this was on your list of things to talk about, but I feel like the number one misunderstanding about it is that it's what you eat and not the involvement of the hypothalamus pituitary and adrenals. Of Whoever said that, Danny Roddy, please point to any online communicator, online influ influencer who has said at any time that the Randall cycle is about what you eat and not about other things as well. Because I haven't said that at any time or anything similar to that. Of the lipolytic systems releasing fat into the blood. Like the like that the Randall cycle only involves what macronutrients you eat. Who said that? I never said that or anything similar to that, ever. The Randall cycle is in effect the thing that reacts 
to the concentration of sugar or fat or a mixture of sugar and fat within the cell cytosol getting to a level that would cause damage to the cell and as such it reacts in a manner designed precisely by natural selection pressure to protect the cells from that damage and prevent that damage from becoming worse. One of the most important ways that you can change the concentration of either carbohydrates or fats in your blood and therefore in your cell fluids is by eating foods of various different makeups, isn't it, Danny Roddy? And given that that's my wheelhouse, that's one of my areas of expertise, that of course is where I concentrate in my discussions with helping people to avoid the Randall cycle activation in the most common way that it does occur, and that is through the diet. But at no time did I ever say diet is the only way you can affect the Randall cycle. Ever. Every meal versus a low thyroid, high stress situation, which is always causing the liberation of fat and always causing that effect to happen. Yeah, you're, so yeah, you're I mean, saying it's both, right, Danny? You're saying that it's involved <laughs> the excess lipolysis and fatty acid oxidation, regardless of food intake, is also a problem. Yes, and that is correct. Yeah, yeah, like you could eat. Uh, Nobody ever, no, well, I never said otherwise. And I'm not aware of anybody else either who has said otherwise. Straw man. 100% carb diet or something. But if you had like severely low thyroid, you would be activating systems that were always releasing fat into the blood, thus always activating the Randall cycle. So, so I guess I've always seen people saying, don't eat fat and carbs together because you'll activate the Randall cycle. It's very likely that you will in that case because sure as little green apples grow on little green apple trees, Danny Roddy, if you pile heaps and heaps of carbohydrate and fat into your digestive system, it will dump those things into your bloodstream and that will have an effect on the Randall cycle. So the statement is correct. Yes, there are things that can moderate the actual effect of the Randall cycle on an individual basis, on a case-by-case -case basis, yes, but those things would be minor in comparison to the very major effect of the dietary inputs of those two things at that time, Danny. Fact. Sorry about that. But anyways, that if that's neither here nor there, uh, let's get to the point. Yes, let's. That'd be a good idea because you're only digging a hole for yourself, Danny. Yeah, I, I think the most important piece to talk about is the metabolic machinery because the Randall <laughs> cycle is metabolic machinery. This is, this is what I mean about spotty little boys hiding in their basement, giggling away to themselves. The analogy of referring to the Randall cycle as a piece of metabolic machinery is just that. It's an analogy. I think it's quite apt. Actually, that's exactly what it is. It's a physical thing. I'm a physical thing. You're a physical thing. The microphone to which I'm currently addressing these comments is a physical thing. Uh, so is the Randall cycle. It's a piece of machinery. It's a piece of kit. It does a certain role. It reacts in a certain way to a certain input, and it provides for certain outputs. What's your problem? If you don't like the analogy, that's fine. Use a different one. It doesn't matter. That's not important. What's important here are the facts. So we need to get in and talk about all the different gears and bolts of this, this machinery. <laughs> yes, which would also be an analogy of talking about the components of the Randall cycle and how they interact with each other, which again would be fine as an analogy. <laughs> People <laughs> we'll might not there, know we'll you're, you're joking there. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it was a quote from... I am being 100% facetious, 100%. <laughs> what you're being is 100% a moron. And that's no surprise because Mike Fave, for those that don't know, is, uh, is qualified as a nurse. Nothing wrong with being qualified as a nurse. That's not the thing that makes him a moron. The thing that makes him a moron is that he thinks that as a nurse, he is in a position to critique me, a senior scientist with more than a quarter of a century's experience actually doing research science in the area of human nutrition and human uh, physiology, pure and applied statistics, etc. It's laughable, Mike Fave. You're an absolute um, buffoon of the highest order, and you're a charlatan. You are a child compared with me academically. You have no business leveling um, critique at me whatsoever. You are completely out of your depth. You are completely outclassed. 
To use another analogy, if it was a boxing match, it's like you're a six-year-old girl and I'm Mike Tyson. Okay? Deal with it. <laughs> Notice also how we are severely lacking in any actual grist here for the mill. There has been no actual discussion of any details about what I might be mistaken on. All right. All right, Jay, go ahead. <laughs> sure. So I just want to say a couple couple of things here so one like this video just involves bart like constantly accusing paul of like misrepresenting what's going on not understanding the biochemistry saying that everything is wrong well not everything just most of what paul has to say is wrong and the reason that i am stating it's not an accusation it's a statement that he is misrepresenting the facts at hand is because that's what he is doing jay the fact that you're a Saladino fanboy because you're a Ray Pete fanboy and a Danny Roddy fanboy, just because you're sucking all of those lollipops, Jay Feldman, those sugar-filled lollipops, um, that has no bearing on the actual reality of the situation. And the reality is Paul Saladino is criminally misanthropic and he is misguiding an unsuspecting public about aspects of human nutrition human physiology fact facts to which i have pointed in explicit detail again i note here that you are totally failing to bring any actual detail to the table here like that he doesn't get it at all at all but this because paul saladino doesn't get well i think he probably does actually some degree get it i think he's actually though not concerned about facts reality and um public health what paul saladino is interested in is paul saladino's bank balance okay so i don't want to just do that same thing to to bart but you're in no position son you're completely out of your depth you you are absolutely utterly outclassed by me and I'll prove it any day of the week and twice on Sundays if you'd like to actually have a discussion with me about this. Boy. Either just like focus on what actually is happening because like, or, or I guess another way to put it too is like, we'll explain everything, but go ahead and like, look at the papers discussing the rental cycle, you know, look into the, like what is actually going on. So this is, you know, this boy can't even get a sentence out here and he thinks that he could foot it in the ring with me in a discussion, again, the ring is an analogy, don't get excited, this boy thinks he could foot it in the ring with me in a discussion about anything. The brain fog is patent here. Down there and come to your own conclusion, as opposed to, like, I think a lot of people get swayed by somebody who just very strongly says that somebody else is wrong. And are I have never said to people that they should not read papers. Ever very good at that <laughs> yes i am very very good at pointing out where people are wrong jay feldman yes i am so, and does that a lot in that video so i don't want <laughs> i do it a lot because paul is wrong a lot in that video i'm also doing it a lot in this video here jay because you two son are very wrong clearly i'm gonna just do that in this video and then have that or have a crack again we're still waiting for the very first semblance of any actual material here about which you could suggest that i have been wrong in any way be it he constantly Although, is like, aspirated by like like oh my god like he's the, he has a, he has a <laughs> shtick and he sticks to it pretty thoroughly <laughs> <laughs> yes he does danny roddy have a shtick yes i do so you have one too it's being a buffoon and an idiot and behaving like a prepubescent teenage boy The problem is, though, is like the Randall cycle is the Randall cycle. Correct. Yes, it is. It's not like open to interpretation. Wrong. There's your credibility gone. Everything is open to interpretation. The very facts of reality are open to interpretation, Mike Fave. Absolutely. So if we if we needed one single comment to straight away dismiss you as someone who has no idea of, of what he's talking about whatsoever there it is right you don't so, get to make up what it is yeah. <laughs> okay well if the accusation is i'm making something up point to it you don't just sit there and say i'm making something up without pointing to it 
We're not going to make up the, well, you don't just make up the Randall cycle. So Correct, you don't. What you do, if you are Sir Philip Randall, is you do some research into the existence of the components of the Randall cycle. You identify them, you elucidate, and you publish a paper on it. You call it the glycerol fatty acid cycle because you're not an egotistical person. And then later on down the track, others say, no, we should call this the Randall cycle because it was him that proposed it. And, you know, it has since been absolutely confirmed as existing. Yes. Regardless of what Paul Saladino, who was correct in his video on how the Randall cycle works. No, he wasn't. Mike Fave. That's why I said he was incorrect, because he was incorrect. Wrong. And we're what Bar K, who doesn't seem to know how the Randall cycle necessarily works. Okay, so after 25 years as a senior scientist, as a professor of health science specializing in, among other things, human physiology and human nutrition, I don't understand the Randall cycle, says Mike Fave, who probably never even heard of the Randall cycle at all, actually, uh, until he watched my video on it. And then he quickly went and did some reading on it, and now he thinks himself, with his nursing degree, to be an expert in the physiology and is able to make a statement about who it is that's likely to be correct and otherwise without actually pointing to a single piece of actual material at all or any points. Wow, get your ego under control. Get your Dunning-Kruger under control, Mike Fave. Who on earth do you think you are? This is incredible, isn't it, boys and girls? Based on his explanation in the video, uh, his response video to Paul, like regardless of what they say or what Jay or Danny or I say, Wikipedia literally... Right, well, if, if, if we wanted to have any doubt whatsoever that Mike Fave has absolutely no credibility as a researcher or as a consumer of research at all, there it is. Mike's search engine of choice is Wikipedia. We're done, Mike Fave. You have nothing to add to this discussion from this point forward. You might as well shut your ignorant pie hole right now. You're done in the space. Your credibility is gone permanently. What's next? Really, we'll describe the Randall cycle to you, and you can go look up pictures of the Randall cycle, and it'll show you all the little cool diagrams with NAD and FAD and the complexes in the in the electron transport chain and we'll just see the level of dunning kruger here this boy thinks looking at pictures looking at diagrams will give you a deep mechanistic understanding of the interaction of a vastly complex area of human physiology and that a layperson would be capable of gaining such a deep and mechanistic understanding of the thing by looking at such a picture such a diagram and to all intents and purposes in this field, Mike Fave, you are a layperson. Okay. Describe it for you. So like what we're going to describe here is what the actual Randall cycle is, which is what Paul Saladino discussed in his... No, he didn't. He got it wrong. And I pointed with detail, specifically and explicitly to what he got wrong, particularly. If you want to correct me, then you need to point to what I have got wrong. Good luck. This video in which Bart K said that he got wrong, but it, you know, we're just going to discuss what the Randall cycle is and Warrock and also going to discuss Bart K's points to some extent. I know Jay, you have some quotes, but the most important piece. So some quotes out of context, that'll prove your point. Absolutely. You ridiculous buffoons. Here that everybody needs to understand is the Randall cycle is an important piece of metabolic machinery. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Jay here. Well, See, it wasn't funny the first time, and it's not funny the second time either. The analogy is perfectly apt. If you don't like it, use a different one. So, uh, you've, like, we kind of have to bring that up now. So, in the video, Bart gets very particular about the exact wording that Paul uses. Yes, because it's important. And then goes on to say that the Randall cycle is a piece of metabolic machinery. Which it is. That's exactly what it is. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Which, like, it's not? Like, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Just saying it's not doesn't change the fact that it still is. Physical <laughs> thing. And okay, so the Randall cycle is not a physical thing, says Jay Feldman. 
the Randall cycle is a construct. It is a um, model, which is correct. It's been shown to be correct. It functions exactly as predicted by the models. It is what is thought about as it's actually the result of the interaction between several very physical things. Those physical things being the cells of your body on an individual basis, the tissues of your body on an organ system level and, and um, biologically geographical zoning of your of your body tissues basis and as a whole across an organism as a whole a person as a whole as well of course yes and the other physical things being the physical concentration of sugar in that person's blood ergo in their cell fluids up to a level where the randall cycle will then intervene to control that situation and the level of fats as well all physical things, Jay Feldman. If you believe that physical things are existent at all, because as I said earlier, the very nature of reality and physical existence is itself a construct, is something that we determine to be internally consistent via observation of phenomena, which is consistent with the model that we have proposed quantum physics, quantum electrodynamics, quantum chromodynamics, for example. All physical things. You, J. Feldman, are a piece of machinery. So am I. So is the microphone into which I'm speaking at the moment, or the monitor at which I'm looking at your mummy's basements uh, in now. They're all machines, okay? They're all pieces of physical kit. They are all objectively um, real things, okay? And at the same time, they're not based on the quantum thing, but that's for another day. Side, <laughs> the cell, like there is, you can't point to the Randall cycle. It's not like... You, you can because Mike just did on Wikipedia, Jay. It's a construct. And the cycle is the result of the workings of the metabolic machinery that underpin it. You absolute child, you pathetic little buffoon. What's next? Next to, you know, it's not like in the mitochondria, it's not next to <laughs> complex four of the electron transport chain. Like, it's not a piece of metabolic machinery. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, you absolute fool. It is the result of the workings of various bits of metabolic machinery. You're splitting hairs, you're setting up straw men here. You are not making any headway. You're not even pointing to anything I've got wrong because I haven't got anything wrong. Ridiculous. So that's why Mike keeps saying that. Yeah, Ray always <laughs> would say that he's like, it's not a cycle, but it's called the Randall cycle. Yeah, he'd always <laughs> play that up. Like well, it's just spread. funny because because Bart was like trying to be so specific with how Paul uses words. Like, I wasn't trying to be. I was very successful in being very specific. That's what I do, you pathetic little boy. I think Paul said that you burned fat at one point, and then uh, Bart was just like, "You don't burn anything in the body." And it's like everybody understands the idea of like burning fat or burning. Oh, okay, so it's okay to be sloppy with your verbiage, so long as that's in line with your ideology and in line with people that you agree with, as soon as you think wrongly that I've been sloppy in some way, you're all over that, Mike. Which is it? You fucking hypocrite. Carbs. And so he was like so literal with the interpretation of words and then went on to like not be right literally in what he was saying. I absolutely am right. The Randall cycle is the result of the workings of various bits of metabolic machinery. Ergo, it itself, in effect, is a bit of machinery. I am literally absolutely unassailable on that. And this is not important. Do you have anything to say about the workings of the Randall cycle that I have wrong? No? Still? 
Yeah, you so know, that's why that's being, why I keep picking on it. Being pedantic in type A is associated with a hormone. I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> Might have been serotonin, <laughs> I think, or, or a, not a hormone, a sibling <laughs> substance. Anyways, okay, keep going, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> sure. So the other thing, again, while we're just like talking about some funny pieces from the video, there's also a point where Bart claims that he was the one who like brought attention to the Randall cycle. Like I did in this space. That's a matter of public record. You can go and check it out for yourself. Nobody in the human nutrition space on the YouTubes was talking about this at all until I started doing it a few years back. Much like the paper itself that underpinned and described the Randall cycle had been buried pretty much under a pile of papers somewhere for reasons that we might get to in this video if it becomes relevant as to why that happened. It's not taught in nutrition schools. It's not taught in physiological classes in universities. It's basically ignored. To the community <laughs> of alternative... <laughs> Good comeback, Roddy. Do you have anything of value to add to society? Still no? Good. Like the alternative health world? Like he was like taking credit for it as if it was like a... No, Sir Philip Randall is the bloke who gets credit for discovering the thing. New thing? Like he just like within the last month put out a different video about it and is like acting like that that's the first time anyone's talked about the Randall cycle. No, again, that's your assessment or that's what you say your assessment is, that doesn't prove me wrong on anything. Still. <laughs> um, sir oh, Danny Roddy, shut the fuck up, you fucking moron. You, you know, the only reason you're behaving this way is because you're actually out of your depth even with these two boys. The, the damage you have done to yourself with all the sugar consumption over the last few years, the, the patent, obvious, um, challenges, health challenges that, that are clear there. You, you're just a buffoon and an arrogant and annoying one at that, son. You Philip Randall you can't prove founded the Randall cycle <laughs> and it's in every single biology textbook when you go over cell respiration. Not one I've ever seen. I'm sure it is in some of the books. However, that has no impact on the fact that nobody was talking about the Randall cycle as a YouTube influencer on YouTube videos before I started doing it. That's what I said, and I said that because I believe it to be correct. If I'm wrong on that, somebody point to someone who made a video about it before my first one. If that's even important, which it fucking isn't. And you go over the Crabtree effect, the Randall cycle, etc. <laughs> yeah, when like obviously it's something that's discussed a lot in the bioenergetic world, or like has been discussed throughout the years quite a bit. Yes, yeah, since about 1963 when it was published. However, largely not. And this is the point where it does become relevant as to why not. Why not is because basically its interpretation is at odds with what was being pushed as an acceptive narrative at the time. And what was being pushed as an acceptive narrative was that narrative being put forward by the criminally misanthropic Ansel Keys, who was very, very good at marshalling folks around him to his cause and managed to basically get a, a so-called academic consensus together of folks who basically discredited the thing and got it buried. Sure, it might be in a textbook. Sure, it might have been taught to some students in some courses, but very, very few. If you do a survey of people who hold undergraduate degrees in human physiology, you would be shocked, I would imagine, about how few of them have ever heard of the Randall Cycle, despite holding a, a degree in the topic. Again, if you want to prove me wrong on that, go for it, if that's important to you. But that's, that's not important. You are suggesting I've got some things wrong about the Randall Cycle, and we are still fucking waiting for an example. Aren't we, boys and girls? Yeah. Yeah, it's not anyway. a new phenomenon that's been unknown that he uncovered from the... Nobody suggested it was. 
Again, you are putting words into my mouth and you are suggesting I have said things that I have not said. It is unacceptable behavior. It is childlike. It is pathetic, desperate, and destitute. About what I would expect from someone with your complete lack of any credence in actual science, Mike Fave. Okay? Research. Go back to looking at your Wikipedia page. You in the low carb world, though, because they just started talking about it maybe in two th late 2018 or 2019. Yes, after I mentioned it. That's why we started talking about it, Danny Roddy. And that's what I said has occurred because it has. Facts again, though. Sorry about those. I, I, we have I, to go I, somewhere when the insulin hypothesis explodes. I, I had never heard them talk about it before. Like, um, for example, I think Sean Baker just put a video out about parathyroid hormone. And that's ostensibly like the first time I've ever heard somebody <laughs> bring attention to that before. And so, and anyway. Except for you. Is Danny Roddy capable of stating anything, completing a single sentence, without this ludicrous infantile giggling? No. You brought the parathyroid, <laughs> you and Ray brought the parathyroid hormone out stuff from the get-go. That was like in your hair like a fox video, you literally listed parathyroid hormone. Literally is literally the most overused word literally in the human literal language, you literal buffoon and the levels with which you want to keep it down. I think you did it first, and then Chris Ma Master John talked about, like, regulating vitamin D, parathyroid, phosphorus, and calcium, and then obviously Ray wrote articles about parathyroid hormone before all of us were born. Well, well it's just like exploring physiology. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, trying to do a big picture of what's going on. It's not... And the fact that they leave out, like, when are they going to start talking about prostaglandins? Like, one day they will start incorporating that. <laughs> Sounds a lot like Ray Pete. Into their their picture of everything, but not today. Anyways, we no, no, now is the opportunity. <laughs> now is the opportunity with like everything being about the seed oils, but oh, I don't yeah. think it's going to happen. Yeah. Anyway, we keep cutting you off, Jay. Keep going. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. All right, so. Yeah, there was, I guess I'll share a couple of quotes. One other thing that's, uh, that he's said a lot. And again, like along the lines of being pedantic and, uh, literal and everything, he kept talking about Randall cycle activation being a problem. And again, there's no cycle. There's nothing to be activated or turned on. It's just a phenomenon that occurs under certain contexts. Like there's nothing to activate. Yeah, there is the effect you buffoon. God, you're stupid. Man, if you had two brain cells to rub together, they'd both be fucking lonely, wouldn't they? You activate the effect. Fuck me, this is oh, pathetic. Absolutely disparate, destitute, pathetic, and infantile. We are still waiting for anything I've got wrong. There's no activation. My own, like, just I've just explained what the activation is very clearly. It's very straightforward. Even a severely intellectually disadvantaged goldfish can understand this. Again, talking about words. So anyway, he said he like was he kind of like created this new thing that isn't the Randall cycle. And so he I didn't create anything of the sort. No. Talked about how the Randall cycle gets activated every time your blood sugar spikes and that this causes an inflammatory response. It does. And it does. And so here's like a direct quote. He says, what the Randall cycle does is when the level of sugar in the blood is elevated above the resting homeostatic set point, it locks the doors on the cells to the influx of still further glucose. It controls the concentration of glucose in the cells. Yes, that's what it does. So again, we're not going to focus on obviously the fact that cells don't have doors and, you know. We don't again, it's an analogy for the transporter, you fucking buffoon. I don't have to go into that, but um, like, not that I was ever. See, Phil don't have doors, so Bart goes wrong. <laughs> That's the level of infantile garbage we're dealing here with these absolutely brain fogged buffoons, these absolute charlatans, these complete pathetic little. Cats. That's the best you can do at trying to assail me. Wow, incredible. We're going to, but you know, just with how he is. But so this is like not the Randall cycle. <laughs> yes, it is. 
That's one of the effects of the activation of the Randall cycle construct by means of too high a level of blood glucose. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Not even close to the Randall cycle. It's like wrong, Mike Fave, nurse. Wrong. Mike Fave, Wikipedia reader. Wrong again. Buffoon. Shut your ignorant fucking face cut. You silly little boy. Wrong again. The exact opposite. <laughs> no, it isn't. False. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good. That's what I'm talking about with the mature and evolved level of the discussion here from these turds. Yeah! <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so far from it that it's like kind of hard to know what to, where to start. Maybe it's worth... We'll start at the beginning. Point to where it's wrong, because it's not wrong. You idiot. Starting with like what the Randall cycle is. Uh, so what, what we're basically looking at is, is competition. And I think Bart had an issue with... Uh, with uh, Paul saying that there's competition between fatty acid metabolism. You think I had an issue. You don't think at all, Jay Feldman. Think. <laughs> Glucose metabolism. I think he said, he said it's cross inhibition, not competition. Again, I don't know what the point is of, of saying those things, but. I said it because it's important. Just like you think it's important to point out that cells don't have doors. Which in effect they actually do. Um, basically what's happening is when you metabolize glucose, there's a handful of things that happen only when you metabolize glucose, you know, it goes through glycolysis. You have therefore an effect in terms of the FADH and uh, the FADH2 and NADH that get produced. And that's going to affect the ratio between those two which then goes on to affect the NAD to NADH ratio. And then it has a whole kind of uh, like, there, there's a whole sequence of events that happens because of that, where it. Okay. So you've, what you've basically done there, Jay, is you've stated that you're aware of the existence of NAD plus slash NADH and FAD slash FADH2 but you have given us no information whatsoever as to how they work in a cell, what the interactions with other cell components are, what concepts are at play, or you, what, basically what I'm saying is you haven't shown us any indication there that you have any grasp of the functioning of any of this. You've, you're just saying words that you've probably also looked up on, on Wikipedia. What's next? It has certain inhibition at certain uh certain, 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 certain what 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 certain certains are certainly certainly happening here, certainly then. Since you're an expert and I'm completely wrong about what the Randall cycle even is, Jay, why don't you tell us what certain certainly certainties are certainly certainly occurring, certainly? Uh or, or it has an effect on certain enzymes in the Krebs. Oh, which ones? Which ones then? Cycle, certain enzymes in glycolysis. And then the opposite is happening when you're oxidizing fat. And so when you're oxidizing fat, you end up with a much higher FADH2 to NADH ratio, and you end up with a much lower NAD to NADH ratio. And so that's going to inhibit a bunch of the glycolytic enzymes. That's not how the Randall cycle works. No. <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. Absolutely destitute, son. And so... And there are some other, again, there's some other features here with the carboxidation. You can end up with excess citrate and that can get converted to malonyl CoA and that inhibits fat from coming into the cell. That's the actual functional working part of the cycle in respect of what you're talking about here. Nothing whatever to do with the cofactors, coenzymes. Nothing directly anyway. And what you've just shown there with your waffle, Jay Feldman, is that you are not in command of this material, you are not in command of how this works. You do not have a working understanding of this. What you have is an opinion based on your ideology and your dislike of my ideology, 
your dislike of the way I present myself, the way I form my sentences, well, congratulations, son. Opinions are like assholes. Almost everybody's got one, and mostly they're full of shit, Jay Feldman. Again, these are like it's kind of the detailed steps of the biochemistry, and they're like important and worth looking into and, and understanding for sure. Yes, and that's where you've fallen down, Jay. You don't, clearly. But the point here is basically that the metabolic process of converting glucose to ATP ends up inhibiting the uptake of fatty acids and then the usage of fatty acids. At, again, we're talking about the mitochondria and then we're talking about the cell. And then the opposite is... Well, which are we talking about? And in what context? You're just making noise, Jade Feldman, again. You're just waffling and you're not actually providing any information. It's happening when we're oxidizing fat where it has some inhibiting effects on the uptake of glucose. And that's essentially the Randall cycle. And, and it's only like it's something that is described in the individual mitochondrion. So this is something that, again, is. No, it works on the whole cell. Again, if you want some, some evidence that Jay Feldman has no grasp of this material and no understanding of what it even is, there it is there. The Randall cycle is not limited to mitochondrion. It works on a cellular level. There are aspects, there are bits of the metabolic machinery, Jay, that are affected by the Randall cycle being activated, Jay, throughout the cell up to and including the cell membrane itself. Proteins on the cell membrane, transporters, doors on the cell. Jay. Okay, sorry about those facts again. Talked about a lot, like Danny, what you were referencing in terms of this meaning that like you can't eat fat and carbs at the same time, but... Nobody said you can't. You absolutely can. It's easy. Should you? That's a different story. The answer is no, you shouldn't. This isn't saying anything about what's happening to substrate in the blood, where things are getting partitioned, whether one... Neither are you, Jay Feldman. Nothing at all. You're not providing us with any details at all. Tissue can be using glucose and another can be using fat or anything like that. It's just talking about what happens in an individual mitochondrion. No, cell, not mitochondrion. Buffoon. Wrong again. And of course, there are many mitochondrion in a cell. And so... Yes, so the Randall cycle has bits of machinery that are affected by it in the mitochondria, on the mitochondrial membranes, and also in the cell cytosol, and also in the cell membrane um, proteins, transporters, the doors. Individual cells can be affected more or less by the effects of the Randall cycle, and two cells perfectly adjacent to one another can be affected differently depending on the energetic, in effect, situation in that cell at that time. I have never said otherwise, ever. What's next? I mean, that's kind of the, the basics of it, but what it essentially means. That's kind of the basics of it. What kind of information did you kind of give us about the kind of basics of anything there? None at all. You said NADH and FADH2 out of context and inappropriately. You mentioned a bunch of other things like citrate and melanol coenzyme A, which are relevant here, but you didn't say how. And then you falsely asserted on more than one occasion that the Randall cycle only affects mitochondrion, which it doesn't. But absolutely, tell me why I'm wrong about everything I've had to say about the Randall cycle. I think we're getting the picture here, aren't we, boys and girls? It's pretty clear, isn't it? It means is that a cell or mitochondrion can't use both fat and carbs at the same time. That's really all. That's not true. I never said that either. And neither did Philip Randall, and neither does anybody else who understands the Randall cycle. You can absolutely, you, and do, use both fats and carbohydrates for energy provision in a cell at the same time. All it's saying. And there's a lot of, like, that matters, and there are, there are a bunch So not a single thing that you've had to say you got correct there, Jay Feldman. Nothing whatsoever. Completely wrong on everything. Good. Good work. There's reasons why that matters, and we can talk about that, but that's... I'd like to hear some more from the nurse, though. I wouldn't. The essence of it, it's not... 
something that's related, like it's related to blood sugar, but it's not, it's not started by an increase in blood sugar. Yes, it absolutely is. If you understand how it works, you stupid little boy, you absolute charlatan. Wrong again. Fuck me. If you understand what the bits of kit that are active in a cycle under the influence of a high level of sugar, then you understand what the Randall cycle is and how it absolutely is a response to high blood glucose. Okay? There's no two ways around this. There's no way of getting out of this. There's no way of litigating this otherwise. Just sitting there inanely saying it's not caused by glucose doesn't change the fact that it fucking is caused by glucose. It can also be caused by fat alone. Mostly it is caused by a mixture of both carbohydrates and fats together. Most powerfully. Okay? Straightforward. And it's I don't know, like, where he's coming up with those things. You don't know any, you don't know dick about fuck, Jay Feldman. That's the problem. You have just eviscerated yourself in terms of your credibility on the workings of the Randall cycle by making five or six statements all in a row and in one inane waffle, all of which are demonstrably incorrect. And you want to sit there and claim that you have the ability to foot it with me and somehow point out where I'm mistaken here. It's absolutely fucking laughable, son. And my people are laughing at you. They are rolling around on the floor, gasping for air, with their sides just about splitting, laughing at your total ineptitude. Okay, what's next? The, the yeah, original it, PJ Randall paper talks about um, glucagon, maybe adrenaline and glucagon. Maybe that he's confused in that way. No, he's not confused about anything whatsoever. Danny Roddy, how dare you? Absolutely fucking ridiculous accusation. I think we can all see who it is that's very, very badly confused here. Like those emergency hormones and cortisol, like causing hyperglycemia or something? No, nothing to do with it. I never said anything. I didn't even reference those things because they're not relevant to what I am talking about. I, I, don't, I don't I mean, but... But he that's, that's right, you don't, do you, Danny? You're completely out of your depth. You don't even know what's going to come out of your own mouth next. Even if you read the paper with that, the elevated glucagon cortisol adrenaline would cause glycemia through gluconeogenesis yeah, yeah. and through insulin resistance, mm -hmm. not... See, insulin resistance, there's your credibility once again, straight back to where it belongs in the toilet there, Mike Fave. Insulin fucking resistance. Goodness me. Wow, no clues about anything, have you, son? None at all. Not because the cells are just like <laughs> locking the doors because the blood sugar is too high. The blood sugar. Okay, you haven't fucking understood the Randall cycle at all, Mike Fave. Not, not, not on the first most fundamental levels. Absolutely fucking ridiculous that you would say what you've just said, because it's absolutely 180 degrees out of phase with objective reality demonstrable reality and it's also out of out of phase with what the the randall cycle actually is and how it actually works as demonstrated very very clearly already by actual scientists which you as a nurse son are not one of okay what is next there's high because there's an increased output and a decreased uptake how so you couldn't even i don't know how you even get that interpret <laughs> like if you did how you get that interpretation God, you know, it just stuns me how anyone could possibly be this particular mixture of stupid, ignorant, and arrogant all in one mix. It's, it's incredible to me. Wow. Mike Fave, you are an absolute ass monkey. You're a fuck trumpet of the highest order. If you want to debate this with me, Sunshine, you have an opportunity. Email me and we'll do it live on camera. And I will point to exactly where you are totally 
utterly lacking in destitute here, and I will point exactly to where the interpretation, the correct interpretation that I have provided on the Randall cycle comes from. Okay? It, it, just to, like, just, I guess, to summarize your point, Jay, is that when you have fat, you won't be able, if you have a lot of fat oxidizing through a cell, you're not going to be able to oxidize glucose. False. You don't even understand that. That is false. And that's related to changes in NADH to FADH. And no, it isn't at all. No, wrong again. And acetyl CoA to uh, acetyl CoA to uh, C what's it? CoA. See, this is what I'm talking about. These are boys here who want to fucking cast aspersions on my credibility. And as soon as they start to actually try and talk about the workings of the thing here, they immediately start tripping over their own feet because they do not know what they're talking about at all. Incredible. Hey, ratios. Mm -hmm. And it's a basically you just like you don't have enough NADF <laughs> or uh, acyl-CoA at prove dehydrogenase to have the Krebs cycle work or be linked to, to glycolysis. No, that's not how the Randall cycle works. No. Among, there's some other things that go on there as well. So if in this, in the state, what other things? Because you've got all of those things wrong, Mike. So why don't you give us another list of some other things that are going on as well? Maybe you might actually stumble on the right one, the one that's actually the point here. Oh, okay. Where you were like, it, it, it's specific to the cell, not necessarily specific to what's going on with blood sugar. Like you're not necessarily, like blood sugar. The cell is reacting to what is happening in the blood sugar, you buffoon. Fuck me. Is this rocket science? No. <sighs> Incredible. The level of ineptitude here. The level of stupidity being shown by these buffoons. Wow. Elevated blood sugar things that are going on there is happening as an effect of this process that's happening at the cell. The other thing that I no, not really. The way to elevate your blood sugar rapidly, effectively, to a dangerous level, very quickly, is to pour in exogenous carbohydrate. Gluconeogenesis won't do it. You have to pour in exogenous glucose to make this happen. The cells react to that by locking the doors. That's the analogy I've used, and it's perfectly apt. If you don't understand the mechanism of that, because your Wikipedia page wasn't able to point to it for you, Mike Fave, that is your fucking problem, not mine. The fact that you can only list a bunch of things that exist in cells in a completely inappropriate and out-of-context fashion and stumble over doing that while giggling inanely in the background with your little mates Danny and your little mate Jay there. At, at what time, by the way, does your mum come down with a little plate of nibbles for you to the basements, to your mum's basements that you're all hiding in there? Because, I mean, you, you all must be dangerously short on blood glucose by now because you all haven't been stuffing your faces with carbohydrates the whole time. Mm. I think he touched on it, and something that Paul discussed was that Paul was saying that the Randall cycle can cause a physiologic insulin resistance. Oh, my God. Wow. So now your reference material for veracity switches from Wikipedia to what Paul Saladino says. Very credible, Mike. And then Bart was saying that that's not true. There's no such thing or something along those lines. I don't have the yeah. quote, so I don't want to like build a straw man. But you don't want to build a straw man. Oh, okay. That's news to us, boys and girls, isn't it? But that is 100% what happens. That's no, it isn't. No. Wrong again.
completely 100% wrong. Wow. Oh dear, oh dear. It's like not even questionable. And yes, it is. And I have questioned it in detail in my videos, if you'd care to go and check. And then you can debunk me on the details if you like, Mike. Good luck. Because remember, I make sure I'm unassailable at all times. Fucking idiot. And you can detail the mechanisms through the Randall cycle. If you are running on large amounts of fatty acids, you are going to decrease your uptake of glucose through the Randall cycle. Correct. Yes. Um, and there's multiple steps that are direct that you can directly look at. It's like not even a controversial statement. Correct. However, that's got nothing to do with insulin resistance, which is a construct. What piece of kit measures insulin resistance? What manufacturer makes an insulin resistance meter, Mike? Point me to the company so I can go and buy one. Fucking idiot. And it's also known that high fat diets, keto diets, etc., do lead to a state of physiologic insulin resistance. And no, no, that's a construct. That's an interpretation. That's not a fact. At all. Again, what company can you point me to that builds and manufactures and markets an insulin resistance meter, Mike? It's a construct. That's not something you can measure. Even proponents within the sphere have discussed this. I think Thomas DeLauer. All right. It's a good, good. So your, re your, your reference sources are getting better and better, aren't they, Mike? Wikipedia? What Paul Saladino says are now Thomas DeLauer. Wow. Do you subject the ridiculous, excremental, pustulous nonsense that comes out of your face to even a second of cursory refutation before it comes out, Mike? No, I thought not. Has gone on to discuss this, and I think he did it on a video with Paul Saladino talking about his back. Oh, well, it must be credible then. I think blood sugar being a little bit elevated on his labs. Um, or maybe not Paul Sell, you know, with uh, Derek from More Plates, More Dates. So there's another one. Good. Derek. Wow. Wow, Michael. Incredible. Absolutely fucking, by which I mean lacking in credibility entirely. Everything you have to say, buffoon. Um, so like it's, this, this phenomenon is known. It, it No, it isn't. It's a construct. It's a concept. It's not a phenomenon. Blood glucose, you can measure. Blood insulin, you can measure. The rate of production of either of those things you can measure with a, with a radio label and some pretty expensive, pretty funky kit in a laboratory, yeah. None of those things are insulin resistance. Sorry about that. Like, there's not even controversy there, so... There is, though. And so what if there is controversy or not? The facts remain the same, Michael. There's, like, Paul just, you know, it's not like I'm best friends with Paul or anything, but Paul is correct. Just No, he's not. That's why I said he's not correct, Mike. And you are incorrect, too. Your incorrectness is born of your arrogance, your ignorance, and your stunning Dunning-Kruger. Don't you have some bedpans to go and clean up or something? On, an, on a conceptual point. That physiological insulin resistance should be called uh, metabolic slowdown or pseudo-hibernation. <laughs> like that, that would be a better n name for it. Because, uh, you know, Rob Wolf and Matt Lalonde, they used to say that 10 years ago. They'd be like, no, it's physiological insulin resistance, you know? And, it, and they make it sound like it's not a harmful state to be in. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that when you activate the Randall cycle, which occurs precisely in order to protect the cells from the damage that they would otherwise suffer, that is not pathological. It occurs for a reason. It is encoded for in our very genes. 
the fact that you boys can't get your fucking pea-sized brains around this is no surprise, frankly, but it's also your problem. Wow. Yeah. And of course, like, they're, yeah. Oh, c- good. Well, that clarifies everything. Thanks, Jay. The, the, in, Mike, I know you. <laughs> you were saying, like, you didn't have the quote. And, and so there was a point where he said, in response to Paul saying that there's physiological insulin, insulin resistance when you're, um, you know, favoring fatty acid oxidation and you're not oxidizing glucose, you know, in like a, a state of ketosis. And his response was, no, that's a construct. That's a concept. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, correct. What are the units of measurement? <laughs> what is that? So, so, and first off, of course, like a concept and construct can't be wrong, right? A concept and a construct can't be wrong. Yes, they can. Like, <laughs> or, or it can't be right. Sorry. Like it is inherently wrong because it's a concept. Uh, no. Fuck, you don't even understand why I've said what I've said. You are so utterly destitute of, of even the most common, most basic common sense. You're so utterly lacking in any scientific background whatsoever that you don't even understand why I've said what I've said there and why it is important. Wow. There are two parts to the posit here, Jay. One, it is a construct, not a physiological phenomenon. It cannot be measured. It has to be inferred from other things that you can measure. So it's not a fundamental fact of reality. That's the first point. It is a construct. And secondly, I then go on to explain why it is absolutely being interpreted wrongly, falsely, especially by buffoons like you who are supporters of the Ray Pete nonsensical garbage and the Paul Saladino excremental pustulous garbage. Very, very straightforward to understand if you have a modicum of intelligence, and that's where you fall down, son. That's like, what is that? Anyway, go ahead, Mike. I know you were going to talk about well, the, the units of measurement of insulin resistance. Well, that, that was the thing that blew my mind that he was... Mind, you say, Mike? No. No, son, you don't have one. And I forgot about that element. I was thinking, I didn't... He's talking about, like, you can't measure insulin resistance because it's a construct. It's like, you can oh. measure cholesterol, you can measure blood sugar, you can measure... It's like, you can use values to determine insulin resistance. It, no. You can't. It is a construct, you buffoon. That's my whole point. The fact that you can't grasp that in your pea-sized brain is your failing, son. Fuck me. It's called uh, HOMA IR. Right, which is a scale, a gauge. It's another construct. It's another number which measures nothing, actually, because there is nothing to measure here. Again, the fact that you can't understand this just points to your total lack of ability to actually qualify to even be a part of this discussion. Human, I forget the specific uh, breakdown, but you can measure insulin resistance. No, you can't. No. And yes, it is a construct, but it's basically a construct of multiple empirically measured values. Right. And as such, can be misinterpreted if you don't understand the interworkings and interactions of those components, as you clearly don't, Michael. And those bedpans aren't fucking cleaning themselves up, son. What, so, what, was he talking about the, the natural human sp- uh, state? Like ketosis or something is one of insulin resistance or something? See, now you're just making shit up. Didn't he say this? Didn't he say that? You have no fucking idea what I even did say, Danny, because for a start, you'd have to actually pull that cotton wool out of your ears for three seconds to hear what anyone has to say. 
and stop laughing maniacally like some kind of severely intellectually disabled goldfish. I don't know if he said that, but he was talking, he was basically, he also went on some tangent about how cultures didn't have access to carbohydrate and things like that. Like, which is just obviously that's like, that's provably wrong is no, it isn't. No, it isn't. <sighs> Pathetic. Well, but you know, that's his, I like <laughs> this you know, video. I can't argue opinions. I like this video being filtered through you guys. Cause I haven't actually seen it. <laughs> it sounds like outrageous. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it's what these boys are saying is outrageous. Danny Roddy. Totally outrageous from, from start to finish. What these boys are saying is that Wikipedia is a good source of information. So is Paul Saladino. So is Thomas DeLauer. And so is Derek from More Plates, More Dates. And um, a bunch of things like NAD, FAD, H2, citrate, melanol, coenzyme, A, cells don't have doors, though. Um, but no actual... No actual grist in the mill here at all. None at all. Incredible. It is. It was. It was. It was ridiculous. It's like <laughs> making. Try no, what's ridiculous is you, Mike, sitting here making this ridiculous video with your little mates, waiting for your mum to bring down little pop tarts or whatever she's bringing down there to the basement for you. When actually, what you ought to be doing is going and cleaning those fucking bedpans. Okay? Incredible. Trying to be extremely precise on language and then just... Not trying to be, being. Unassailable, Mike. Because you haven't assailed me here today at all. You've got nowhere fucking near me. And I suggest that you probably ought to make damn sure you don't son okay just making things up as you go <laughs> as if you understood the topic says this guy projection there much mr um cells don't have doors though uh nad fad melanol coenzyme a citrate though um yes you can measure a construct even though you can't um um bald man bad bald man wrong me clever. No, son, you're a buffoon. And then presenting it in an authoritative way. So My authority is derived from my absolute demonstrated academic research and consultancy um, and um, being a former senior lecturer of cardiovascular pathophysiology, the physiology of rest and exercise, um, pure and applied statistics, and a bunch of other things as well, Mike, over, over a six, of an extended number of years. My authority such that it is, is, is beyond question in this field. You have dirty bedpans waiting for you. Go and fucking clean them. Well, people believe you but not actually understanding how the Randall cycle works and making. Yes, I do inherently, clearly, explicitly, unassailably, and you haven't got anywhere near assailing it. You've got nowhere near it. You've espoused an, a mindless, vacuous, and substance-free opinion, and that's all you've done. And you've made yourself a laughing stock of my entire force of um subscribers who now all know what a buffoon you are in statements that are directly contradictory as well as to insulin resistance <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just like it was it was mind-blowing to watch it's literally my oh, it would perhaps be mind-blowing to someone who has a mind michael you'll have to take somebody else's advice on that i'm blowing Classic yeah bar. i think a so like also as you were saying mike like with the whole idea of like the concept of insulin resistance maybe what he's trying to say is that uh like physiological insulin resistance isn't bad but that's still like it's just a name it's not it's not saying that it's good or bad it, it ex just like a door on a cell is just a name or metabolic machinery is just a name for something 
perhaps maybe this it's a it is a concept that exists um but you also like you see it with the glucose challenge test like that's normally how they'll test it like they'll have somebody no that's how they test your response in blood glucose it's very specific that's what science does it tests specific things it measures specific things and in the case of an oral glucose tolerance test it tests your tolerance to glucose jay you fucking child yeah on a low carb diet and they'll give a glucose challenge test and they'll do really poorly like you have very poor glucose metabolism in that state and people will say that and you'll see like in and in a bunch of other states as well not involving insulin at all in any way actually jay that's the whole point here idiot ketosis forums or like people who are talking about low carb like if you're going to get a glucose challenge test you have to get out of the, like you have to start eating carbs again for a bit if you want to have a good result on it um, like for insurance reasons or whatever it is like it, it, it actually it exists it's but there's there's no reason why anyone should take an oral glucose tolerance test because the exact amount of oral glucose that is indicated in human beings is not one gram ever <laughs> well and the thing is is the fact that is physiologic insulin resistant insulin resistance exists from Bart K's perspective should be a good thing because apparently right. glucose causes inflammation. <laughs> so not apparently it absolutely does. And I have said on more than one occasion that the Randall cycle doing exactly what it should do based exactly on the genes that encode for it is a good thing. I have said that Mike, you dumb c Oh, and the other <laughs> thing is like I, I don't know if the, he discussed reactive oxygen species but i this is a maybe perhaps that's right you don't know you don't know dick about fuck tangential i see this all the time but people in the low carb space talking about how you shouldn't eat carbs because it increases reactive oxygen species at the mitochondria and it's like the main increase in reactive oxygen species at the mitochondria one of the strongest is fatty acid oxidation that is literally Brad Marshall's as literally we've covered that word CD1 um ROS and Peter at hyper hyperlipid who's yeah and Peter yeah, exactly and that and that's and and now this is supposed to be about something that I might have said because I didn't now you're just going off on some completely other tangent about something that you've read a Wikipedia page on Mike on one occasion perhaps and you're showing a very, very high lack of understanding of that topic too. That's why there's like a preference for saturated fats in those diets, specifically palmitate for an ROS increase, whereas carbohydrate and polyunsaturated fats create less ROS at the mitochondria because of how they're oxidized. So like, I guess the whole sphere to some extent is a bit confused <laughs> on these different topics. Yeah, I think we can see clearly who it is that's confused absolutely clearly anyone with more than three brain cells can see who it is that's confused here and who it is that's completely out of their depth and who it is that is speaking out of their lane and out of their area of expertise and who it is that's completely ill-equipped for this discussion yep we can all see that but yeah the i just wanted to to touch on that point really briefly because fat oxidation causes more ros than carb oxidation yeah you've said that and it's there's no actual evidence that that is so. That's that's an interpretation of some work that you're talking about there, and it's it's pretty vacuous again, Michael. And carboxation doesn't necessarily directly create inflammation. Well, well, th th Nobody said carb oxidation causes inflammation, Mike. I didn't say that. That was always a confusing thing because, you know, Dominic D. Agostino, and, and he had a paper with Seyfried, the, the cancer dude, and he was arguing mm -hmm. that high fat was good because it led to R more ROS, and that would be like a self-cancer type of treatment. So the, the type of toxic therapy that you do for cancer could be done with high fat, a high fat diet, like it could cause lots of oxidative stress. And so, again, again it's like so important to... Uh, progress what your premise is like that that's why all this stuff is so confusing because people are launching i i think life is pretty confusing for you danny clearly watching off from different places and nobody's a step i mean this this boy is really fucking battling isn't he 
really battling. Listening like first principles of what generates good health and what generates bad health. And so therefore it's like so ridiculously confusing navigating the health world because all these things lead to different places and different starting places and things. Yeah. Cause there's no frame, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no, there's no frame. To, and that's why Ray's work is so valuable there, because he literally provides extremely comprehensive frame to this. No. Ray Pete is a criminally misanthropic, incompetent buffoon. Fact. End of fucking discussion. And you're an idiot. As we've already clearly seen, Mike Fave, and those bedpans are still dirty, son. Discuss all all of these different points. There, there yeah, exactly. And, and there, who's that keto acids are good medicine dude? He's like a um, uh, whatever. He was a big key. Uh, key he, he thought that any DH should be higher than any D. Like that was the, the preferable state of the cell. So imagine if you thought that, like you, the whole thing would be flipped upside down. And so anyways, Danny, there's oh, no v such thing as re reductive stress. <laughs> Kate Shanahan told me that. And so there's only <laughs> oxidative stress. Well, if Kate Shanahan said it, uh, uh, R <laughs> Veach, something RL Veach or something was the keto acids are goodness. So there's a reference to oxidation and reduction and the redox potential of cells. But the basic fundamental workings of the thing totally and completely, utterly misrepresented and miscomprehended by both Danny and Michael here. Wow. Like anyone that actually understands how either of those things work or any of that stuff works doesn't need it explained to them. They are shaking their heads along with me going, fuck me. These boys are incredible, by which we mean totally lacking in any credibility. Wrong again, boys. I just don't have time to explain it to you in this video. It's already well and truly long enough. Maybe I will make a video on that for another day. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Jay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. We should probably like wrap this part up. So... <laughs> I guess it's interesting because, you know, I, I shared that quote of what he was saying earlier and I was kind of looking at it. And then his next quote, which is like related to the insulin resistance, this is uh, probably toward the end of the video, but he says, if you're in ketosis, it means your blood sugar level is near baseline. And as such, the Randall cycle will be entirely deactivated and your sensitivity to insulin will be at its highest. So one thing I want to say there is, again, even from his perspective that like this is a piece of metabolic machinery that turns on and off or activates. No, I've made it very, very clear on multiple occasions that it's not an on-off situation. And I didn't say anything remotely similar to that. In fact, the statement about near zero activation implies directly that it is a sliding scale situation. It's a sliding scale in every given cell and in every given mitochondrion within a cell that has multiple mitochondrion in it. And your organ system level, tissue system level, for want of the better term, um, sensitivity to insulin, or conversely resistance to insulin, is absolutely a function of all of those things, looking at it from the top down and from the highest level. Nothing you have had to say here, Jay has pointed to anything that I've got wrong in any way whatsoever. All you have done is reinforce what we already knew before we even started watching this video, which was you are out of your depth completely. You are operating at a level of Dunning-Kruger, which is off the scale, and you are attempting to take shots at a senior academic who's operating at a level 10 times higher than you could possibly ever hope for about things that you actually have no understanding of. And it's that lack, that total lack, that destitution of competence and understanding that leads you to your ridiculous conclusions about what you think it is I've said. It's pathetic. Activates and deactivates. It would be activated in the case that you're oxidizing fat. Like it's a two way. Like the oxidation of fat inhibits the uptake of glucose and slows down glycolysis. Like that is the whole other half oh, of the. God. When does this end? 
these boys that do not understand the Randall cycle wanting to tell us all about the Randall cycle. Randall cycle. And so, but he's saying that it will be deactivated during that state, but also you're saying your sensitivity to be to insulin will be at its highest, which again, like is just clearly not the case in terms of the physiological and insulin resistance that does exist. No, it doesn't. But maybe it's probably not so helpful to a listener who is like listening to this and like doesn't know what the Randall cycle is. For <laughs> Well, of course not, because you don't either, son. Obviously, clearly and patently, you do not understand the Randall cycle. To just kind of share these quotes. <laughs> that don't make sense. Um, I, I don't know if there's anything, I don't know if we should just like, again, kind of encapsulate and just say, like explain the relevance of it or point people to just to the original papers. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, th I think that go ahead, Danny. No, you, you go. I was just going to say, I think that the most important points to drag out about the Randall cycle is one of the first ones is what Danny said, that if you are releasing large amounts of free fatty acids from your tissues, because you're under stress through glucagon, adrenaline, cortisol is the main or growth hormone, which is, those are the main hormones that'll do it. You will have insulin resistance from those. And that's, that that's nonsense. Sorry. All of that is nonsense. You are not going to release a significantly large bolus of free fatty acids into your blood in the manner that you are talking about that would powerfully activate the Randall cycle. The way that you would have to do it would be to consume a huge bolus of fat in a short period of time. This is just incredible. You don't even understand that. Wow. That's where you would see like possibly a pathological, pathological insulin resistance in like a diabetic state or a stress state. So that's the first piece. The second piece is that, that like the Randall cycle is happening at every single cell. And yes, nobody said otherwise. Every, so it doesn't like, it's not that all cells are oxidizing carbs or that all cells are oxidizing fat. And then, no, nobody said otherwise. This isn't necessarily a point that was brought up by, uh, or that part was saying. So this is kind of. Yes, I have said that explicitly on more than one occasion. You lying. Separate, separate from that. But different tissues will be using different substrates at different times. And then also different tissues will be using the substrates, not only for generation of energy, right? You can use carbs or fats, proteins, et cetera, for different structural hormonal purposes, et cetera. So there's, there's that element there. And then the last piece to keep in mind is that the, the Randall cycle effect in states of like starvation or lack of access to food and things like that is actually helpful. And it's there to, to some extent, to spare glucose for the tissues that need it, which are, which Paul discussed. So you've never heard of gluconeogenesis then have you not buffed and you've interpreted that falsely as well. The adrenal glands, the, the test, the gonads, and then more specifically the central nervous system. So the rest of the body kind of get, gets, well, that's a topic about which you know clearly even less than about the Randall cycle. Fatty acids and then all the other tissues that that specifically require carbohydrate get carbohydrate. So it's a sparing mechanism in times of lack of access to carbohydrate. And it's, it's adaptive and it's helpful in those situations. But a lot human beings are capable of producing all the glucose they require from non-glucose substrates. There is no such thing as a shortage or lack of availability in a negative sense of exogenous carbohydrate. We don't require one gram ever. Buffoon. Long-term running of that process is detrimental through multiple other, through multiple specific mechanisms. So just. Which? Which ones? The basics of the Randall cycle. That's why it's kind of important to keep in mind and giving, I guess, some context to it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we no. Wrong. Just nonsense. Just completely inept. Completely incompetent reading of everything there from Mike Fave. Good. I could list some things that occur like that bad that occur because of the Randall cycle. So like a lack of CO two. Um, lack of CO two. No. That's not what the Randall cycle does. An amplification of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenals. <laughs> Probably some leaky intestine, like, uh, um, okay. I've had more than enough. This is more than long enough. It's an hour and a half, um, already.
just absolute garbage from some pathetic little boys who think themselves competent to talk about an area that they absolutely patently and clearly are not. Ridiculous, ridiculous from start to finish, pathetic, desperate, not a single point did they score over anything I've had to say. Did they point to anything I've ever said that was incorrect? No, they've just behaved like a bunch of schoolboys, basically, and it looks like it. All right, good. Join me next time when someone else will be wrong on interwebs, because um, there's a lot of that going around. See you then.